In this section, I would like to talk about fundamental technique that comes even before、uh, plucking strings. So, including、uh, sitting and placing your hand and finger in the right position, and also breathing. So, let's begin with sitting. Sitting is very important for hard playing because we are talking about a millimeter precision of、uh, fingertip movement、uh, relation to the string. So, if the sitting is Unstable, and if we move a little bit, it m o v e a lot at the end of the、uh, limb. So it's very important to have a, a very stable sitting. So, and then it's, it's not that easy. So, let me explain、uh, the process. I usually I, I kind of check myself how I check myself. To lead into the、uh, good and stable sitting position. So, first,、um, when we are sitting, and most of you probably are sitting right now, we are sitting on the pelvis. We are not sitting on the side, actually. If you have a, like a long Image of your own body actually, the thigh start below the hip, but actually,、uh, thigh bone, if this is a pelvis, thigh bone is not the below the、uh, pelvis, actually, it's starting on the side. So, see, the joint is on the side like this. So, when we sit, actually, the thigh moves forward like this, so it means the part. Which is touching to the, the surface of the chair is the bottom of the pelvis. So, actually, you can feel it. If you put your hand under your butt, buttocks and maybe on both hands, and you can feel like a little like round shape end、uh, edge of the, of the pelvis, right? On both sides. And then Keep the awareness there and remove your hand. And if you feel the same kind of pressure on the both sides, your pelvis is placed straight over the chair. And that pointy bone is basically the pointy part of this, this ball. That's why I, I picked this ball. And it's kind of a tiny, bone, bony leg is holding your upper body. And then, if you're holding your,、uh, tightening up your thigh or your calf to support your body, it means you're like leaning too much forward or sideways or something like something is wrong. So, kind of, you need to find a position that、uh, your thigh is relaxed and then. Shaking butt a little bit on the chair and find, and kind of, if you shake, if you shake it, it kind of it makes the body part relax. So, and after shaking a little bit and then relax and then find the right balance, the way, find the place, both、uh, those two parts, like a two pointy part of your butt, actually feel the same pressure. And it's kind of rooted into the、uh, cushion of your chair. Right? And now you got the position of the pelvis. And then above the pelvis, we have a vertebra stuck up like 24 small bones stuck up like this. Right? So, body. and then imagine、well, this backbone is 24 small bones, and then try to move your awareness from the bottom to the top. And then as if you are putting your Vertebra one by one in the balance. So, if you are not in the balance, actually, if it's in the balance, sooner or later you, you feel like this, right? Your gravity will collapse. So, to avoid,、uh, to resist the gravity to collapse the, the vertebra, actually, in our case, I mean, in, inside our body, If you stack up the vertebra like this, we use a muscle. Imagine like my hand is muscle, it's supporting this to the straight. So, 
it means we are consistently using a muscle. And of course, if you keep consistently using muscle, it causes the pain and muscle fatigue. Or also, imagine inside of this vertebral, uh, we have a thick bundle of nerves. Nerves, nerve is running. So if it's bent like this all the time, and of course it's it's kind of give a pressure to the different part of the nerves, and then it also also cause their problem. So try to stack up your vertebra in a way on top of each other, which will stack, which will kind of balance by itself. It's kind of you try to kind of feel it. It's kind of meditative. Steady, isn't it? So, and then eventually the head. Head is important because it's so heavy. If you put your head a little forward like this, and it probably you start immediately start feeling the tension in your back, middle back, to the upper back, and sometimes even the lower back. So that's why uh, often the people who uh, use a computer a lot is uh, creating lots of back problems. It's, uh, it's very important to stack up your vertebrae one by one like this. And then eventually you can put your heavy heaviest this is my cat's toy actually I stole from them but to the head like this. Right? So and then you you put your head a kind of a shake and not not too hard but the kind of a shake and sometimes you can turn your shoulder and then Sit straight, and then make sure that your buttocks, your um, hip bone, in the right place. You are not holding your foot like this to support your body. Okay. And another important uh, thing about sitting is when you sit. Actually, the, my my chair. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, just this one down like this so my chair is like like this this is a, called drum throne it's a, a design for a drummer who use uh, uh, pedals and both foot so this is for me this is perfect for harpist as well but probably most of you are sitting like uh, the bench or chair like, uh, all the side is like this straight so in this case if you sit too far back. If your buttocks are around here, your thigh is actually on this edge, and in this edge will press your thigh and um, disturb your blood flow or or uh, disturb your muscle movement. So it's better to sit closer to the edge and make your thigh freely moving, or just get one of those benches. I mean, it takes a little while for you start feeling comfortable because you cannot sit comfortably on this chair unless your pelvis is in the right place with the balance because there is nothing else to support because thigh is free so thigh is not supporting you so much so this type of chair is really help you to sit straight if you can afford to get it but if not the sitting close to the edge actually it's much better than uh, sitting further back. And once you get a position, so you're gonna put a hop closer to your body. But often what I see is, okay, so somebody can sit perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna hold the hop and then move the body. So if you do that, it's kind of you waste all your energy and time to sit straight. So when you hold the harp, instead of moving your body according to where the harp is, you need to move the harp according to where your body is. So, you sit and then holding the harp. So, if your, the, your, if your harp is hitting your head, instead of avoiding your harp, actually you need to move your harp and then the place go to the, the place where it's not hitting your head right and then 
Okay. And then another important thing here is if you're feeling a uh, lot of weight on the shoulder here, it means it's rest restricting the uh, movement of your collarbone here, so which is not good because earlier we, we explored how much wide range of movement our shoulder can make if the collarbone can move freely. So always I try to put my harp in where the harp can standing by itself. It's kind of balancing itself. Right? Of course it can it will it will stay there forever. It won't stay there forever, but just roughly around here, right? If the hub is balancing itself and we can support hub with a minimum force. So and then and I try to make sure that when hub is coming closer to me because of the gravity, my right knee can support the instrument not my shoulder if you we do that actually we cannot i cannot move my arm right arm freely so support the instrument with my knee right here okay and then it's balancing itself like this so the next step is we have to bring our hand closer to the string and make the shape which can uh, pluck strings efficiently and at the same time uh, bringing out a beautiful sound. So lots of you probably already learned how you have to make your sh hand shape so I don't go for there uh, today so much um, but I want to talk about the rest of the part like uh, not hand but actually other joints so remember that uh, we have so many joints between our body stem to the fingertip which is actually uh, plucking the strings so we have eight mobile plays. So it means to change something here, uh, we don't need to really work on here, but um, we have like a, in a way, infinite possibility to position our entire arm to be able to achieve the one position. So, and then among all this infinite possibility, we need to choose something more effective and easier for the body or more natural. So, I guess everybody has a kind of comfortable register. You can play very comfortably and in a good shape your hand has a very nice shape maybe some people it's here maybe some people it's here some people it's here I don't doesn't matter which register but find the register you can play very comfortably like a scale or whatever scale is okay here or, or arpeggio whatever patterns you can play comfortably so if you can play comfortably there it means your hand has a good shape there so if you can keep that hand shape and then do the same thing in a different register that's easiest because if you change the hand shape in a different register you have to memorize like hundreds of different patterns to to get a nice sound but if you can fix one good efficient easy hand position in one place if you can move that hand position to just other places by using not here but the, the bigger part of your arm or farther part of your arm by moving the entire shoulder something like that so um 
For example, uh, let's say this is very comfortable here. So I want to play comfortably also up here. And then, but, oh, this is so tight. I can't really play well, like a, it's so tight. So because often what happened is uh, we locked elbow here and then, okay, this is comfortable because maybe this is the angle elbow elbow actually tends to naturally feel comfortable so okay okay 10 and then going here actually and then try to move below the elbow so only so we're gonna kind of try to go like this and of course the the angle of the hand changes here so oh it's different i kind of get the good sound so try to uh, actually uh, to get this hand position here and you need to twist your wrist like this and you can get get it but look bending here bending here and then this this part is also very tight here so you tighten tightening up all this muscle and plus you tightening up here and then making this shape and then you cannot keep this posture so long or if you keep playing like this you're gonna start hurting here maybe you start feeling weird here too so instead of doing this unlock elbow and shoulder and even the collarbone because collarbone alone can move arm this much or down right and then the arm, uh, upper arm can move this much and then elbow of course move and the elbow can also turn like this and then also entire arm can turn like this too so there are lots of possibility to move so keep this shape actually even like an angle of the, the wrist and then blinging entire shoulder up here I feel comfortable on my wrist and the finger here and elbow is very relaxed here and then only place I'm, I'm trying to uh, force a little bit is the is the blinging my collarbone towards the backward it means like a, a shoulder blade is like this on the back of your body so it's trying to uh, tight uh, close the shoulder blade to each other like, like this so and Good news is shoulder blade is moved by the big muscle. So even if you move a lot like this, it doesn't hurt so much. It's, it's like, it's also, it's kind of designed to be able to do that. And of course, if you're not used to using the shoulder blade like this, it's kind of awkward. So you need to aware, okay, I have a shoulder blade and then I'm supposed to be able to move. And I kind of, if you start moving shoulder blade, like uh, intentionally it actually it means like uh, if you uh, uh, pay attention to the collarbone and they move the collarbone back front up down and rotating or something like that and it's automatically moved your shoulder blade so if you start doing this kind of exercise I and mean, it it's lessen your shoulder uh, tense shoulder it's very actually it feels good it's like a good massage if this feels too tight still Another solution is you can lean back a little bit from your lower back. Lean back a little bit in the moment you're playing up here, for example. So, and you have a space and it's more comfortable. Instead of bringing your shoulder back like this, it's possible. Or lean back a little bit. Either way, it works. And for me, it's very important to sit stable, sit with a stability because um, also I'm watching strings when I'm playing. And if my eye moves or the relation between the body to the instrument change all the time, I lose accuracy because I'm seeing that all the moving target and I have to hit that in a millis millimeter accuracy so that's getting harder if i move too much or if uh, the instrument move too much like this so my rule is try to keep the instrument stable try to 
uh, keep my body stable, but the all these parts, mobile part, is very free to be able to move. And then the instrument under my body stem is stay very stable, but I can play a very dynamic thing. So uh, I think it's very helpful for us to breathe intentionally with the music as singers or wind instrumentalists uh, do usually because they have to breathe out they have to exhale when they are making sound so and but harpist actually we don't need to do that uh, because when you pluck you can make a sound but if we intentionally believe as if our breath is making sound actually it makes our playing more convincing more um, I call uh, our, our performance can bring transform more, more emotion like a singer can do or the wind instrumentalist can do so uh, breathing important I learned this by uh, learning martial art judo if you come to the judo uh, dojo judo dojo it's kind of confusing but dojo for judo and uh, first thing you have to learn is how to stand and how to walk how to move and how to breathe so when you are uh, applying your technique actually if you breathe in in the wrong place actually you cannot get enough power to to uh, execute the uh, the technique so you need to kind of plan where to breathe in and according to when you apply the technique so it's breathing is very a, a part of the skill of the martial art and then the playing music is not any less than martial arts in my opinion it's a highly athletic highly uh, uh, intelligent and highly skilled highly refined uh, uh, system so I think we have to uh, breathe intentionally and also the breathing uh, give us the fresh energy of course oxygen uh, physiologically but I think we have more than oxygen and in, in air maybe some kind of spiritual particle there I, I don't know but for me it's air, breathing in actually bringing in more than just oxygen more than just chemicals so and all this means um, breathing is very important so uh, try to breathe intentionally with a flow of music for example um, there's a like, natural flow of music like a uh, let's say if as if you are singing maybe you can uh, flow with a melody you're playing like a you, you breathe in first and then the first phrase I'm 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 breathing out very slowly and then when I finish the first phrase, I breathe in relatively fast and then prepare for the next phrase. And if you intentionally bleeds uh, according to the music, actually it makes your music flow more natural and also it's easier for your body as well.
Thank you.